Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel, Homespun by Kathy, where I build new and upcycle farmhouse furniture and decor. You can check out everything I've built already and have for sale over on my website, homespunbykathy.com. Y'all, it's pouring down rain. I'm probably yelling at you, but this is the only time I had to film this, and so this is what we got. So something you're going to see in these videos that you probably won't see anywhere else um, are some DIYs and things we're going to be doing to my house. My husband and I renovated a little house about five years ago, and it was actually my grandparents' house. So many memories. I grew up next door to them, so I was there all the time. And they built it in 1940, and it was just four rooms, and then they built onto it maybe eight or nine years later, and then again uh, somewhere around 70. We're starting on the front porch, and I know I'm a little late. It's mid-May. What can I say? I'm always late, but we're going to get something going on the front porch. I've got a couple things out there, but it needs a good cleaning, and I'll explain it to you out there. What we're going to be doing in this video is building a planter on wheels that I want to put on the front porch. So let's hit it. Okay, this is it. If you can see that shop to the left there in the back, that's my workshop. And as you can see, everything is sort of dark gray on the bottom and white on the top. That's kind of my theme. But that right in front of you is the original four room house. And then the section to the left is what was added on later. And I had that awning built over the windows. It really added a little farmhouse touch. And I know we need a roof. But um, I don't like landscaping anymore. I spent about 30 years with very labor-intensive, extensive landscaping, and I'm done. So I'm going to take a blower and blow away all this debris and the leaves, and it'll be fine. Um, but this is a pretty large porch. My grandparents did not have handrails, so we didn't add any. Um, I'm going to paint and freshen up the columns. And you see that rug there. Um, everything fades. It just gets a tremendous amount of sunlight, so I'm not even going to bother with rugs. But this porch wasn't in horrible shape, so I just painted it and I bought a stencil online for this um, slate look. And we like it and it works, so we're just going to pressure wash it and get everything cleaned up. And these rocking chairs, I painted that color and then I didn't like it. And when my husband pressure washed them for me, some of the paint came off. So I like it now with all the chippiness. So we're going to leave those. Um, and there is that vintage blue that I use on a lot of my pieces in the shop. All of my doors are painted that color. I really, really like it. So we're going to remove that lantern. I was just using that at Christmas with a little Christmas tree in there. And we're going to clean it up and add some plants and that planter box that we're making. And so we're ready to get into the shop and get going on that. raining cats and dogs here again so it's a great day to get going on the planter that I'm building for the front porch and I wanted to explain to you how I'm going to do that I just am trying to use up all the leftover wood and scraps that I have so I bought some two by sixes a year or so ago thinking I was going to make myself a new dining table which I never did so I'm just going to cut one of those down with my table saw into um, two by twos and I'm going to use that for the legs. And I've got a really simple design rolling around in my head. It's kind of a fluid situation. So as we go along, I'll explain what I have in mind. But I want to show you what I, what I want to use as an accent on this garden planter. I mentioned that my husband and I bought my grandparents' house. And they had a building. Um, it was kind of a tractor shed. And then on the back of it, it was what they called a corn house. And so I guess that's where they kept all their silage and 
dried corn and stuff that they fed their hogs because they had hogs. And I actually converted their old smokehouse into my garden shed. But um, I remember this corn house. It's elevated, so the floor is about two feet or so off the ground. And when we cleaned it out, look what I found. In the original box, cedar slats. A ton and groove, really pretty, still even. Uh, in pretty good shape. What I'm going to do is build the legs and I'm going to cut a slot in each leg and then I'm going to just slide these down into that slot and it's going to form the rectangle for the box that I'm going to put the plants in. I ended up ripping the 2x6s down when I use 2x4s, uh, 2x6s you know, regular construction lumber comes with kind of curved edges. So I run them through my table saw um, and take off an eighth of an inch or so on each side just to make it all nice and square. Um, so I had 32 inch legs. So I was able to get three legs out of one of these pieces and then I got the fourth leg out of another piece. And then it was time to cut these slots. It was very easy to do, but it was very time consuming. It took me um, quite a bit of time on a scrap piece to figure out how to stop the blade where I wanted the cedar to slide in the slots and I wanted three pieces. So I'd never done that before. So it took me a little, a little bit to figure out where to stop it on the table saw. And you see, I had to make a mark on the table saw and then I made a mark on each leg. And the cedar was thicker than one blade pass. So for every single slot, which it was two slots on each leg, I had to run it through five times. So it took a minute, but it ended up working really nicely. Uh, the leftover pieces from uh, that second leg I used as what I call stretchers. Basically, they're gonna hold the legs together on the long side of the box. Um, so it's gonna be 28 inches wide and then I had some smaller scrap trim. Um, I see this is the one by two material that I originally cut but I ended up going with a two by two for the sides and they were 10 inches long and then when you add on the dimensions of the legs the two by twos which are actually one and a half by one and a half um, it's about 30 inches wide and about 14 inches deep altogether. So I put two pocket hole screws on each end of each of the stretchers to attach to the legs. Uh, and then I also put pocket holes in the two by twos that I used for the sides. This is a little pocket hole jig I bought at Harbor Freight for about 16 bucks. I have used the heck out of it. And my motto is I'm going to spend as little money as possible, especially when I'm buying a tool for the first time, to make sure I really need it and I'm really going to use it a lot. And then I will upgrade. But Harbor Freight is a great place to start out. Now we're ready to put the leg assemblies together. Just take two of the legs that have the slots cut in them and put one of the long stretchers between and pocket hole screw that together. When I went to put the second screw in, I realized it was too long because it would come over into the slot. So I got some shorter screws for the, those holes I think I went about 10 inches down from the top to put in these stretchers. 
and um, I thought it was going to allow for three entire pieces of the cedar, but I ended up having to go back and trim a little bit off of the top of that. No big deal, um, but it worked out fine in the end. So I made a second assembly just like this one, and then I went back and took the 10 inch two by two pieces and attached both of those to one of the leg assemblies. So the leg assemblies were just basically mirror images of each other so that the slots would be right. It took me a minute to figure all that out. I, I kind of barrel through things and end up messing up sometimes. So I took my time. I think I got it right. So I just flipped it over when both were attached and attached it to the other one. And at that point, we basically have the whole thing, frame-wise anyway, complete. So I went ahead and put a coat of paint on this. Um, the house is white, so I used a very light gray color just for a little bit of contrast. Once it was painted, I was ready to dry fit the slats in there. Um, and this is where I had a problem. This first slat you see is really, really tight. And the second one just slid right in. And then the third one was too short. Although I cut them all the same length. So then I realized there was a curve in one of my legs. So it was making it too wide at the top. And then when I measured at the bottom, it, it was off about an, half an inch or something. So then I realized I'm definitely going to have to cut some stretchers for the bottom as well. And it was a pretty long run anyway. So you can always use that extra support around the bottom to make sure your legs do stay straight and all the dimensions are the same. And I did have to go back on the top pieces and trim a little bit off. I did not get the measurement on the slots as deep as they should have been. But that's okay. We just cut them and everything worked out. And I just used this little scrap trim I had, still trying to get rid of my scrap wood, um, for the stretchers around the base. And I just nailed those in with my brad nailer. And then I put a coat of that light gray paint on those as well. And then I put the casters on. This is just showing one. I was able to screw these in like you would a cup hook. I just started the hole and then was able to screw them on in. And I really like these, they were clear. Um, I got these at Harbor Freight. Then I flipped the whole thing over and I cut some more slats about nine and a half inches and put them in the bottom and they will hold the pots. This is a piece I just put together real quick one day to hang in my dining room in the house and I want to use it on the front door. So I wanted to freshen it up and brighten it up. So I took out the dull pink flowers and left the accent flowers. And then I got some bright pink peony stems at Walmart and I just cut those and replaced them right in the floral foam and just covered up the old leaves with the bright green leaves and just put a little twine hanger on the back and it came out really, really pretty. This is an old fryer basket I got at Goodwill for like 59 cents. And I put the baking soda paint mixture on it and just kind of put some black paint around the top so it would look like an enamel piece. 
and I'm just going to use that as a hanging basket. Um, I had a cedar bench that the legs weren't very sturdy on. So I got these table legs out. I bought them at a yard sale last year for $5. And I cut those to length. I thought, giant spindles, what could be better? So I painted them the same light gray and used those. And I think this is going to end up being my favorite. It was that natural color, and I spray painted it black and put some twine around the handle, maybe three inches up the handle, made a tassel out of the same twine, and um, I had this little pitchfork from some crafting years ago that I hung on there, but um, the plants I put in there just really go with the black really well, so these are also going to be on the ports. So here is a final look of the empty porch. There's my boys. I have to show them. But I painted the post. I painted the post on the porch. And I just gave everything a good scrub. So we're ready to load. Um, I brought this up from my shop. It's on my staging wall down there. I built the base. And the top is actually a lid from a cedar chest I found on the side of the road. And here is the cute spindle leg bench. I really, really think that's cute. So bringing in the chairs, my chippy chairs, I really like these. The gray isn't that great of a match, but I'm not going to paint them again until next year. This is the base of a butter churn. Um, I like everything to have a function. So I, I have a small house. I can't just have stuff sitting around for the sake of it sitting around. So I took the handle out, painted the base, and stained a piece of plywood I had and stuck it on the top so we could have a little table out there between our chairs. So time to dress. I'm just using the same pillows, um, washed them in the washing machine. They come out fine. And then this planter, I love this thing. It was pretty simple to make. Those slots were kind of time consuming. Uh, and I used up quite a bit of smaller wood that I had. And I really like that cedar. This is a sign that I painted about 30 years ago. My husband and I had a berry farm and I sold berries and cut flowers at our local uh, farmer's market. And this was my sign. So I wanted to bring in some smaller things as well. So I have a lot of amber bottles and I collect feathers. I know it's weird, but I found this turkey feather and I put that out there with this little picture from the Goodwill um, and some faux lavender. And this basket is from the last video, the one that I white waxed. And y'all don't mind my big head right here. I just wanted to show you this little area. This is my favorite. I love the way the black basket goes with my mat. Um, you always see a red truck and this one's black and it just made the prettiest little vignette right there with those pink flowers. So we're ready for plants. Uh, this is the hanging basket I made out of that fryer basket. I'm going to pick one of those up every time I see it because I like the way this looks. They're really cute. And then I've just put three little pots in that basket. And look at the color here. I love this vignette. And then our planter box. So cute! Just a final look and I really appreciate all of you watching my videos. Please subscribe and share and make sure you hit the notification bell 